Thrivecart webhook versus query string. In this video, I'm going to cover what are the differences between the webhook and the query string data that Thrivecart sends over. Now, the webhook sends more information and it occurs on all transactions, on a purchase, on a refund, subscription failure. Those all get sent from Thrivecart to typically your web server or something like Zapier. On the other hand, a query string is good for verifying the order in real time. Is it valid or not? And it only occurs on purchase. The link there is a spreadsheet that I put together that shows the data that gets sent over and then compares the two. So let's dive right in. So to start with, inside your Thrivecart account, um, one way to get your data is through the webhook. So you want to go to Thrivecart settings, API and webhooks webhook and notifications, view settings, and I've got a couple set up. So I want to go here and it's basically just sends information to a webhook that you specified. In this case, it's on my account in my web server. It could have been Zapier or something like that. And then um, you by default get query string data if you send people to a custom URL. So let's go take a look at a product. And under fulfillment, you're going to want to have send them to a URL and then tell them the success URL. And then checkout success page needs to be redirect to your own custom page. So I've gone ahead and I have already made a purchase, but let me just show you what I did here. It's going to be this product here. I'm going to copy that URL. And basically I did apply a coupon. I did tick the box and I think I may have taken the upsell, but all that information gets passed over. Now, what it looks like when it gets received is something like this, and I've kind of made it pretty so it's a little bit readable, but notice this is the webhook data that occurred at 1535.09 and then about one second later, the query string data showed up on the thank you page. And let me go briefly through this, but the spreadsheet gives you a little bit more insight. Um, I'll just say that this, frankly, there's a lot more information in the webhook than there is in the query string. Um, so let me just point out a few things that are kind of important. You get timestamps in the webhook, makes sense. Um, the query string, the assumption is that time that it occurs is your timestamp. Um, there's more identifiers for customers, products, things like that. I know these are all consistent. I think this might be unique. Um, here's a good one to point out something. This is T and C, terms and conditions. And the one means that I tick the box. If it was a zero, um, that would imply that I did not. But what's interesting is this doesn't necessarily show up for all products because it may or may not exist. If it doesn't, it doesn't show up. So in other words, you can't count on that being there. Um, even address, if you don't ask for it, it's not going to show up. Email, I'm sure, is going to be on every single one. Uh, checkbook confirmation, I don't think that shows up in the query string. One thing that's interesting is this is first underscore name and last underscore name. In the query string, it's first name last name, no underscore. Under order, it's a little bit more um, structured and I should point out this is kind of an array of data. So the first, I don't know, level is this key value pair. So event is a key and order success is a value. Now notice this ID is underneath this customer. So it just kind of embeds itself. Down here, we've got um, no tax. And again, I don't think that gets passed over in the query string. Um, total versus total string. My preference is to use total, no decimal places. And then if I want to do some math, I do it at the very end. And charges, identifier. This is a little bit different here versus query string. Let me go down. Oh, and I know this doesn't show up in the query string. Payment plan ID and payment plan name do not. Um, this product or uh, purchase map flat doesn't show up in the uh, query string nor does coupon information. So if you need to use those, uh, if you need that information, it only shows up in the webhook, not in the query string. And the purpose of the query string is to verify the transaction. 
Thrivecart sends over this array called Thrivecart which, with a bunch of information, and they also send over uh, a Thrivecart hash, which you can use to verify if the order is um, actually valid. And same information's there, not as much. And for instance, they've shortened things. So this is type, this is ID, this is name, this is price, this is quantity, and this is purchase order. And then let's take a look here. I've got two um, pages here. One's the webhook data, one's the query string with my comments. So anything highlighted over here on the right-hand side in yellow is not in the query string. So event mode, mode init, whatever that is. Uh, your secret key, which of course you really don't want to be sent over the query string. Uh, the invoice ID, the order date, timestamp are not in there. This ID I thought was interesting. I did not find that. And you know what, maybe I did that wrong, but let's go take a look. Yeah, this is only in the webhook. Email, um, this information shows up. And what is this? Terms and conditions, IP address doesn't get sent over. Name, which is interesting, right? It's first and last, that doesn't get sent over, but first name, last name does but in a slightly different format. I'll show that in two minutes. Checkbook confirmation did not, checkbox did not get sent over. Tax, tax type did not get sent over in the query string. Total string, nope. Uh, item identifier, I think they send it maybe a little bit different. They send, for instance, 27 product, but here they basically concatenate it together. They just done some work for you in the web. Payment plan ID, payment plan name, not there. Uh, timestamp not there, that's fine. Really no idea what this is. Is this a Thrivecart specific or is it like a Stripe specific piece of information since I did purchase through Stripe? Um, this is just a little more details that aren't in the query string uh, and this information. Definitely no coupon code ID. So here's the query string data. A little bit simplified if you will. I've highlighted the things that are same. Um, this is the Thrive. So what I'm showing over here on column F is what it's called in the webhook. So in the query string, it's called account name. In the webhook, it's called Thrivecart account. First name, last name is first underscore name, last underscore name. And so this is orders, and then immediately it's the first order, the second order. But over in the webhook data, it's orders, charges, then zero, then one. And I've already spilt this out, you know, this is type, it's type underscore ID in the webhook. ID is reference, name is name, amount is price, quantity is quantity, payment plan ID. You know what, did I do that right? Let's go check. Purchase order, payment plan ID. Okay, so that is over there. The, the payment plan ID does get passed but the payment plan name does not. So this is item name. So this is the same, except for instance, they have purchases 0, 27. Uh, webhook has purchases 0, season. This is purchases 1, bump. Webhook has purchases 1, DDD, which is the name that I gave it. And then Thrivecart hash, which doesn't get passed in a webhook. That's Thrivecart webhook versus query string.